All right, we're recording. So, hi, you guys, and welcome to my channel. We're gonna check out Julian Jackson. We watched him before, but this is another video of him. It says, had more power than Tyson. Mike, my favorite. If you're mentioning his name, you know it's a good one. This video is called One Punch Knockout and the true story of Julian the Hawk Jackson. So, I'm not gonna ramble. We're gonna get straight. Oh, it's all tangled. We're gonna get straight into this video. Let's go. Oh. Oh. <laughs> nah, that was crazy. The devastating power of one punch knockouts. Mm. Nah, that's scary. Look no further than Julian the Hawk Jackson, who has left numerous opponents unconscious with his heavy handed punches. This legendary fighter dominated the super welterweight and middleweight divisions during the late 80s and early 90s, instilling fear in his opponents and building an impressive reputation with each fight. 93 here. Jackson was born on September 12, 1960, in St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands. At the age of 14, he began boxing, but his amateur career was brief, with only 17 fights, of which he won 15. Jackson's natural strength was apparent from an early stage, and he distinguished himself from other amateur boxers with his punching power. His coach advised him not to exert himself too much while punching, as his natural talent would flourish on its own. Mm. On February 2, 1981, Julian the Hawk Jackson began his professional boxing career by defeating Innocencio Carmona in a four-round bout. Oh my god! Don King is there? Of course! Of Over course. the next several fights, oh my god. Jackson scored five what stoppage victories and won on points in a six-round match against William Page. Little did anyone know, this would be the last time Jackson would hear the final bell for quite some time. No, I'm tense. Ugh. Snakes give me headaches. Ugh. All right, let's focus. We will miss greatness. He went on to win another 11 match. fights, setting himself up for a shot at his first title, the WBC Continental America's Belt. This is the 80s tunes. All right, let's focus. They better not have a copyright me for this music. Shish! They're going crazy, though. Warrior in three rounds and defended the title four times. <sighs> Building an impressive record of 29 to 0, 27 knockouts. <laughs> hey, you saw that. <laughs> and earning a chance to fight for the yeah, WBA yeah. junior middleweight title against the division's top fighter, Jamaica's Mike the Body Snatcher McCallum. I heard about the Body Snatcher in another video. In the early stages of building his Hall of Fame career, McCallum was a skilled technician whose nickname originated from sparring in the renowned Kronk oh Gym. God. As an accomplished amateur, he had an unbeaten professional record of 26 fights and had faced opponents of a much higher caliber than Jackson. This experience gap would ultimately be a determining factor in their fight. Jackson started off strong, unleashing his powerful punches with lightning fast hands. McCallum was caught off guard by the speed and power, leaving him with wobbly legs after taking Jackson's best shots. Yep. However, McCallum adjusted and entered the second round in control. I was say, they're going back and forth, like. His jab was crucial in keeping Jackson at bay, and he began connecting with clean shots. Eventually, a right-left combination sent Jackson down to the canvas. Though he got up, he was visibly shaken. McCallum seized the opportunity, relentlessly attacking Jackson until the referee intervened to prevent further punishment. Oh, he 
not responding. Come Jackson on. protested, but the stoppage was deemed fair. Aye, aye, aye. Nevertheless, he learned from this loss and quickly bounced back to achieve his goal. When McCallum gave up the title and moved up to the middleweight division, Jackson was matched against Korean and Chul Beck to determine a new champion. Jackson had won two fights since losing to McCallum and was eager to redeem himself. I kind of like that the ref stopped because we've seen so many terrible and unfortunate situations uh, when the ref don't intervene at all. Beck had only lost once in 42 fights on sorry. points to Sean Mannion and was known for his toughness. Jackson alternated between orthodox and southpaw stances, keeping the aggressive Beck off balance. A left hook sent Beck stumbling back, <laughs> but the ropes kept him from falling, and a count was issued. Ah. Oh, no. There you go. Got him. With the lefty! In the third round, Jackson decided to end it. A right hand rocked Beck before a combination, oh. culminating with a powerful left hook, sent him to the canvas. Finito. Though he managed to get up, a oh. final barrage prompted the referee to stop the fight. Get up, he's not there. Uh-uh, he's not there, no. Jackson was now the WBA... Take him off the screen! We only... Oh, my God. Boo! Boo! ...world champion. For his first donkey. defense, Jackson faced former IBF title holder Buster Drayton. Drayton had been Marvin Hagler's chief sparring partner and had won the IBF crown late in his career, mm -hmm. defeating Mark Metal. After two defenses, he lost it to Matthew Hilton in a 1987 fight. He was a very durable operator. One big bomb that nearly got the Jackson went to work on Drayton from the start, hammering him up and down like a butcher tenderizing meat. Let me see the ground a beef. sharp right hand sent Drayton down in the second, giving the former champion a taste of the speed and power Jackson possessed. Here's a look at that flash knockdown in round two scored by the... In round three, though, he felt the full wrath. Jackson let both hands go from the start, eager to bring things to a concussive end. Ooh, he's trying to get the... Uppercut. Suddenly, a big left hook exploded off the side of Drayton's jaw. His eyes well. rolled as he remained upright but unconscious. Oh, no. Nah. Stiff-legged, he fell slowly backwards, like a tree that had been cut down. No! No, Julian! Look at him, no! As he hit the canvas, he became conscious again, but the fight was rightly stopped. Yeah. It was a mesmerizing and breathtaking finish. Slick Brazilian Francisco de Jesus survived a second round knockdown before being knocked out in round eight in defense number two. It's probably Jesus, right? He's a de Jesus. But Jackson's third and final defense raised his stock even higher. Young gun terrible Terry Norris was viewed as one of the best fighters in the division. His combination of speed and power had seen him record 21 wins from 23 fights. His only losses were a points won to Derek Kelly and a disqualification loss to Joe Walker. He would become one of the best fighters in the division's history, but on this night, he would become a victim to one of the most devastating punches ever thrown. For three minutes, it appeared the title would change hands. Norris' speed allowed him to fire off combinations before sliding out of harm's way. Jackson tried to pin down the quick-footed challenger, but to no avail. But holding the equalizer meant that at any point the course of the fight could change in an instant. And Jackson still had 11 rounds to catch Norris. In the end, he didn't even need three minutes. Maneuvering Norris to the ropes, Jackson stepped forward to shorten the distance. Norris went to slide to the side, but left himself open for the briefest of seconds. Let's see. Jackson crashed through with a thunderbolt of a right hand, instantly okay. separating Norris from the outside world. 
The crowd gasped at the sound of the punch and watched in awe as the ropes held Norris up. Another oh. crushing right sent him down and the fight was stopped. Oh, Whoa. oh I got chills. Mm, oh. oh, oh my god, look, you guys saw the crazy combo. Jackson's reputation was sky high. With no challenges left, he turned his attention to the middleweights and a second world title. Jackson had to take a break from his career for a year due to a detached retina, which used to be a career-ending injury but was now treatable. Detached what? Detached retina? I never heard of that. What is that? He won two fights, one of which was a brutal fourth-round knockout of Wayne Powell. Oh. Oh, he felt that. Which Oof. prepared him for a chance at the vacant WBC title against the elusive and often avoided Harold Bomber Graham. The words unorthodox and elusive could have been created specifically for Graham. His style had been compared to that of a limbo dancer on occasion. Graham had only lost twice in his 45 fights, and those two losses were against world champions Sumbu Kalambe and Mike McCallum. Mm. Both losses were extremely close, particularly the defeat to McCallum, which was for the vacant WBA crown. Even then, both champions struggled to land punches on Graham as he countered with accurate and solid punches. Style-wise, this couldn't have been a more challenging situation for the former junior middleweight king. Joe Cortez is the ref because he's... Uh... For the first three rounds, Jackson found himself in the same position as many fighters before him, repeatedly missing punches while taking punishment in return. Mm. That's not good. Oh my. His left eye was nearly swollen shut, and his chance of winning was slipping away quickly. The ringside doctor allowed Jackson one more round to turn the fight around. Graham sensed that the long-awaited title was within reach, but this anticipation caused him to abandon his strategy. He began to push Jackson back, putting himself in a dangerous position. And then it happened. Backed into a corner and under attack, Jackson instinctively threw a right hook. Ooh, I was worried for the a second. punch landed perfectly on Graham, knocking him out cold. Oh he my fell God. backward toward the canvas with his legs folding he under folded. him. folded! Yeah. Graham oh. lay motionless for four minutes before Jackson could celebrate his incredible victory as the new WBC middleweight champion. This has become one of Jackson's most famous knockouts. Jackson, now known as the hardest hitter in the sport, was included in the list of the best pound-for-pound -pound boxers. Quality over quantity, you guys! Up to my elbow. And whenever I feel that shock, I know it's over. He continued his destructive form with two first round victories in his first two title defenses. Dennis Milton was counted out after a single powerful right hand. And down goes Milton. <sighs> he does not look like he is going to get up. Like While Ismail Negrin was sent to the canvas with a sweeping left hook. Oh my God, what did he say? I'm sorry. Whoa, I just thought he... Slick Ron Collins bravely took his share of numbing shots before being stopped in the fifth round of the third defense. However, Thomas Tate went further than anyone else, surviving a fourth round knockdown to last until the final bell and lose by unanimous Nine, decision. Eight. Seven. This was the first time in 10 years that Jackson had needed the judges' scorecards. Mm. However, he was unable to attract the biggest names in the sport to fight him, so he turned his attention to the other dangerous fighter in the division. This man, with a record of 27-2, had knocked out 25 of his opponents and was blowing away opponents in the same way as Jackson. What was the haircut when he had the hair hair? It... What do they have that in America? It's, a, it's not in Philly, right? It's not Philly. But it's like, ah, uh, uh, Maybe I'm wrong. Gerald McClellan was also a fighter from the Kronk Gym. He had long arms and was a dangerous puncher. Uh, is that the guy who lost his sight from the horrible fight uh, in the UK? Am I right or wrong? I 
think I remember. It's so sad. I want his son uh, boxes. Seemed to have a good head on his shoulder, but it was sad to see him. He previously sad. held the WBO title, which he won by knocking out John the Beast Mugabe in the first round, but he gave it up to go after the more prestigious WBC title. Is him right? I At 25, he was seven years younger than the current champion. When two knockout artists face each other, the anticipation is unmatched. Everyone's it's eyes him. are fixed on the action, afraid to blink and miss that one devastating punch that is both inevitable and awe-inspiring. When the first bell rang in this fight, the entire boxing world held its breath. <sighs> it's him, right? Both fighters showed immense respect for each other's power. McClellan threw the first punch, a chopping right that caused the champion's knees to buckle. However, Jackson reminded the challenger of his own knockout power by stunning him with a big left hook. McClellan then backed off, waiting for the right moment to strike again. The next few rounds were a tense game of cat and mouse, with Jackson scoring points with his fast combinations. In the fourth round, McClellan increased his output and hurt Jackson with long right hands. The action was heating up when the inevitable happened. The fight ended suddenly and explosively. How? We're going back and forth at it. Oh! McClellan threw oh a straight God. right that took the strength from Get Jackson's down. legs. The soon-to-be former champion started to fall back and oh was caught God, with a long left lungs. hook that sent him crashing to the aye, canvas. Aye, 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 aye. Jackson bravely rose to his feet, but McClellan smelled blood. Oh my God! Oh, he got him. He got him. Yeah, he got him. He got no. Another right hand sent left. Jackson down to all fours, and the referee waved off the fight, McClellan signaling the end of Jackson's title reign. However, he would later get the chance to win back his belt and avenge his defeat. Uh, the rematch between Jackson and McClellan, which took place almost a year after their first fight, was expected to be explosive. However, in his warm-up fights, Jackson seemed to be slowing down, winning the first two by stoppage, but struggling to go the full 10 rounds against an unknown fighter named Eduardo Ayala. McClellan, on the other hand, defended his title twice with first round wins. Jackson never expected that the rematch would end up. Was it Don King that I swear I've been seeing him too much? Like, it, it just pisses me off. Oh, my bad. It's not I just... And defended his title twice with first round wins. There he is. Look at him with the flex. Yes. Jackson never expected that the rematch would end up being so one-sided. It was a while since I checked him out. McClellan dominated the fight from the beginning and knocked Jackson out with a powerful left hook to the body after only 73 seconds. Ooh, ooh, we saw it lower. Mm. It appeared to be the end of Jackson's title aspirations. Ah. However, fate intervened, and when McClellan moved up to a heavier weight class and vacated the title, oh. Jackson found himself in line for another chance to win back his old belt. Wow, he had to leave for him to, oh wow. Hello. In the opposite corner stood unbeaten Agostino Cardamone. In his prime, Jackson would have been a heavy favorite, but times had changed and he was no longer the fighter he once was. Cardamone was not known for his power, but he beat up and hurt Jackson throughout the opening round. Compared to Julian. However, <sighs> once again, Jackson's power proved to be decisive when a thumping right hook knocked Cardamone down and out in the second round. Ooh! <laughs> Missed the first one, second. Oh! Jackson was once again the WBC champion. But this time his reign would be brief. Challenger Quincy Taylor 
who was known for being Sugar Ray Leonard's primary sparring partner for his bout with Marvelous Marvin Hagler, beat down the shell of Heavy the once feared Hawk. Heavy names. Knocking him down before stopping him in the sixth round. Oh. It should have been the end of Jackson's career, but he persisted. He won his next two fights on points, evidence of his declining power, before scoring two stoppage victories. Those would be the last wins of his career. He lost two consecutive fights, both being stopped in the ninth round, to junior middleweight contender Vreno Phillips. and then to former world title contender Anthony Jones before finally calling it quits at the age of 37. Mm. His last record was 55 wins with six losses, 49 wins by knockout. In 2003, The Ring magazine ranked him as the 25th hardest puncher in boxing history, a place that no doubt would have been higher had he beaten one of the sport's more illustrious names. Mm. In his retirement, Jackson became a minister and kept his involvement in boxing as a trainer. That's good. His two sons, Julius and John, are both world-ranked fighters. Ooh, I didn't know! Though fans appreciate the skill of a wonderful boxer, there is nothing that quite captures the imagination than a man who has the power to simply render an opponent unconscious with one thunderous blow. Yep. For a period, Julian Jackson was that man. Yep. His place in history is secure. Most definitely. Most definitely. I like that they stay in there uh in the sport in the game because young people need uh, those kind of role models it's important to involve yourself in what you're great at and you know uh, give it up to the next generation with your skills and knowledge and all that but anyways i hope you guys enjoy the video uh, like comment subscribe all the good stuff thank you for watching and hopefully i'll see you in another video bye <laughs>